Okay, can everybody hear? Yes, we can. Okay, you great. Mind. Welcome, good to see you all. I hope everybody got the uh, message about last week. I was out of town, um, so we skipped a week. Um, just regarding next week, um, next week, uh, there'll be a shear in, uh, um, in advance of uh, Pesach. Um, and it will be, it's also going to be the uh, a yort site shear that I'm giving in, uh, in memory of my father, whose second yort site isn't that night, but is, you know, a couple of days later. Um, but it'll be co-sponsored by, um, uh, it'll be co it'll be co-sponsored by Fifth Avenue Synagogue and also Yeshiva University. Um, so it, you know, it should, it'll be a different uh, Zoom, uh, but it will be, um, it should be sent out to you with the flyer, et cetera. So that would be our pre-Pesach um, class this year will be um, coinciding with that Yortzeit share that I'm giving on the topic of Pesach. Okay, that's just a public announcement, public service announcement, as they say. Okay, so I think we should begin, right? Sounds right? Sounds right. Yes. Whenever okay, you're ready. Great. So the, um, <clears throat> there are new Marmacomos that were sent out, and uh, we're going to be using them. Um, okay. So uh, those of you who have the Gemara should also follow on the net. So in the beginning of the, we're starting from the beginning again, even though we, we've been jumping around. But uh, the Gemara on the base of an Aleph, the Mishnah on the base of an Aleph, um, discusses the fact that when a person, um, maybe get me Medina Sayyam, if a person, um, you know, um, gets divorced, sadly, and the um, uh, get is sent from Eretz Yisrael, um, I'm sorry, from uh, Chutz Laaretz to Eretz Yisrael, that's how maybe get in Dina Sayyam. So the Mishnah on Beis Somen Aleph says, Tzorach Sheyomar B'fanei Nechta, B'fanei Nechta. It's necessary for the Shliach, since the Baal, the, uh, the actual husband, he lives, uh, you know, elsewhere. He lives in Medina Sayyam. So he sends a uh, agent to deliver the <laughs> divorce. So the agent has to declare befanai nechta, befanai nechta. He has to be able to honestly say that this bill of divorce was written and was signed in my presence. Um, yeah. And then if you look at the last line on the mission on Beis and Aleph, the Mishnah says that maybe get Be'eris Yisrael. However, if the get was delivered, uh, it was processed, it was written, it was delivered all in Eretz Yisrael itself. There was no cross-country um, aspect to it. Then the Shliach can simply deliver the bill of divorce. It doesn't need to proclaim uh, uh, to affirm that the document was, you know, signed and, and, and written in his presence. But in Yeshul of Orim, is the last line of the Mishnah, Yiskayim Bechosama. If at some point there becomes a challenge to the validity or the authenticity of this um, get, then you'll have to go to court and authenticate the signatures to show that it isn't a forgery, but to verify that it is indeed um, a legitimate, authentic, um, document. So the Mishnah basically is concerned with uh, the possibility that a um, divorce that is sent, you know, um, by by an agent might in fact, you know, um, not really reflect the the will of the husband, and it might not be um, a legitimate document. This is, of course, a question that arises in all societies. And, um, you know, whether it's uh, in economic um, context or, or other important, you know, personal documents, like when we receive a document indirectly and uh, there's a middleman, so we're not dealing directly with the parties themselves, right? Uh, to what extent can you rely on the fact that um, we're dealing with authentic documents and not with uh, some sort of chicanery? So what the Mishnah basically says is that if this is a um, 
process that includes travel, um, then under those conditions, there has to be some sort of affirmation, something that supports, you know, the authenticity of the document. If it's within the precincts of Eretz Yisrael, so um, under those conditions, we can rely on it. If there's a challenge, you know, at that point, then you have to address that. But uh, in the absence of a challenge, a get that's written and delivered in Eretz Yisrael is perceived to be, presumed to be um, authentic. So the Gemara, we've discussed this before, but we're going to discuss a different aspect of it now. The Gemara, not based on an Aleph, um, on the bottom, and going to the next page, explains what's the reason, what are we really worried about? And it records a debate. So the Gemara says, my Tama, what's the reason? The Gemara says, Rabba Amaran, base on the base, to be, Lepishain Bekian Lishma. And Rabba Amar, Lepishain Eden Mitsuyan Lekaimo. So uh, Rabba was of the opinion that the problem is a get, in order to be legally effective, needs to be um, written with purity of motive, meaning it needs to be uh, written specifically for this, you know, um, couple. You know, there's somebody mass produce, let's say there are, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, I don't want to take somebody's names because, you know, it'll be somebody's real name and I'll insult them by, by accident. But let's say uh, X is, you know, divorcing Y. And let's say the most popular name, you know, uh, in the world, you know, is X for men and uh, and Ruben Ruben and Russell, women, right? So you know they, you know the factories, you know the, um, you know people who you know make a business on producing uh, um, divorces or contracts are going to mass produce X and Y, you know divorces, which will be technically accurate, you know, so they can mass produce them and and be ready, you know, in case they're needed. So that is not um, valid in a halachic get. Or a get to be valid, it had to be written lishma, l'shem ish zat, and l'shem ish azu. And that's equally um, Which might explain, by, what's that? Equally accepted by Ede Mitzira uh, proponents and Ede uh, Hasima proponents. So the difference, we've discussed this a little bit, the the difference, be, if you hold Ede, Chas, Ede Mitzira Karsi, like Rabbi Eliezer, then um, this goes to the writing of the document. The Torah says, the Kosav La Sefer Krisus, right? Vinasan Biada, the Shilcha Mi So the word, the Kosav, is interpreted by Rabbi Eliezer as literally the Kosav. So the Ksivas get the writing of the Get, has to, it says the Kosav La, he should write for her, meaning it can't be generically or mass produced. It has to be um, written, you know, with the focus on this particular marriage. According to Rabbi Meir, who says, Karsi, which means the significant um, dimension of the contract of a, of a divorce is not the writing and the, and, the, and the handing over of the document, but it's the signatures of the witnesses. So according to Rabbi Meir, the word Vakasav here means the significant ksiva, which means the chasima, the signing. So there is a difference between Rabbi Eliezer. So, and so the problem that not in the requirement the problem, of problem is in the problem there wouldn't be a problem according to a mayor. You no, know, it would be. It's a problem either way. The only question is everybody agrees that you require the shema that the you know there needs to be a personal um, divorce. The only question is but, is. But no one is claiming that the, that the printers are going to print things signs. with signatures. Why? No one is claiming that the printer is going to mass produce with signatures. The, the concern that we have is on the Kosov, literally Kosov portion, that, you know, that that can be mass produced. So there's two Yaakovs and two Rachels. Somebody should excuse me. But well, this is a question. Right. But, the, but the Hasima, that, that's really pushing it to say that somebody is going to have a mass produced two signatures. Uh, you know, uh, 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 on the get, uh, you know, that's that, that that that's a big step beyond the cost of. Okay. That's a fair point. Actually, that's a point. Uh, we'll get to Rashi in a minute. But um, 
Right. This is a, some of the Rabbi Kivager actually asked a similar question. He says some cases of low lishma, you know, are not just places of low lishma. They're cases of um, chashash sheker, which is kind of what you're saying. Meaning, if somebody produces or signs a document, you know, in a generic way, so vis-a-vis -vis the individual couple, it's not even true. So the problem isn't lishma. The problem is sheker. Truth and falsehood. So that's a question that the Achronim deal with. Rabbi Kivager asks this question. It's a very strong question. But let's leave that aside for the moment because I don't want to get bogged down in that. I'm just telling you that it is a very good question. Uh, I'm just pointing out that the requirement of lishma is uh, agree is 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 you know is universally agreed. The only question is: Are we talking about ksiva lishma? Or are we talking about chasima lishma? And either way, the you know it's not only the um, you know, the question of mass production, it's also, um, you know, um, like, you know, again, there can be, uh, you know, two couples or three couples with the same name. And you can have the agent say, you know, there are three couples are all going to get, you know, divorced. And, you know, when they're signing, they're not signing in a specific way. They're signing in a generic way. So it isn't a lie because it's for one of these three couples, right? But it is still low lishma. So either way, the requirement of lishma is a unique feature. For example, in a shtar mecher, um, you know, if you, you know, real estate deal or a shtar milva, right, a, 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 a contract, a loan contract, Not a problem. there's no requirement of lishma. In a get, because it says the kasa vla, that's where you have lishma. The Gemara actually in the Kiddushin, and that, um, uh, Tesom and Aleph discusses whether Shtar Kiddushin requires Lishma. Um, in, the, in the end of the day, we conclude that it does because the source for Shtar Kiddushin is Gitin. So it's Vyatsa Vahaisa. It's the Hekesh of Havaya Litsiya. And therefore, since the source of Shtar Kiddushin is a Get, if a Get requires Lishma, Shtar Kiddushin requires Lishma. But it's really two views in the Gemara. And as we discussed when we talk about Ksaviado, our previous topic, applying Vyatsa the comparison between Gitin and Kiddushin is a tricky matter, very tricky matter. Doesn't always work fully. Doesn't always work because they're opposite directions. They're the same, you know, category. They're dealing with issues, and therefore the standards may be parallel, but they're, they're also opposite, opposite directions. One is, you know... Directions. Right. So it's always tricky to apply that, which is why the Gemara does have in Kiddushin to, you know, an argument about it. Just because there's Lishma in a get doesn't mean there's Lishma in a Shtar Kiddushin. But La Halacha, we do think that it is a requirement. What's more curious is even if, you know, we learn it from there, we derive it from there, and we apply it, do we necessarily apply it exactly the same way? And I'm going to expand on this in just a minute. Anyway, so it's the view of Rabbah, so Rabbah says as follows, in Eretz Yisrael, apparently there was greater literacy, halakhic literacy, there was a greater awareness of this uh, requirement or less concern that people would neglect it. And therefore, um, unless there's a challenge to the, to the get, the presumption was that it would be, you know, written in a proper fashion uh, and signed in a proper fashion. And therefore we're not worried about Lishma. But when, once you are dealing with a get that was produced in the diaspora. So in the diaspora, you know, the standards are all over the place. You and know, that included uh, Bovel? What? That included Bovel? So that's a discussion of the Gemara later on. In the simple reading of the Mishnah, it does. But right, Bovel had a, you know, at a certain pretty point. Strong, time, pretty strong infrastructure, Bovel had. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, so either way, that's why, according to Rabbah, there's a requirement when the, the when the Shliach says Bafana Nakta, Bafana Naktam, it's his way of saying, you know, um, I guarantee or I um attest everything was in order care that was taken in the preparation of this get that it was done, Kadasu Kadin, with all of the proper um prerequisites. Um Rava, Rava, sorry, has a different explanation. For him, it's Lafisha Ain Aidan Mitsuyim Lakaimo. What that means is once you start traveling, especially in uh, areas where there can be, you know, political discord, boy, we know that. So um, you can't rely automatically 
on uh, on the ability, you know, to to cross borders, you know, and even to communicate, you know, in an effective way cross borders. So, um, if that's true in our time, which it is, it's you know certainly was the case, you know, when uh, communication and travel were much more primitive, and um, if there were you know political disputes, you know, between neighbors, um, countries, etc. So um, you couldn't. So the question is this: in Eretz Yisrael itself, which was you know one political entity. So if there would be a question that would arise about the authenticity of these Adim, the expectation was that you know we could communicate with them and you know find out or try to authenticate you know their signatures, etc. What, what were the historical facts when there was Yehuda and Yisro? So the Gemara, again, that you're asking a really good question, or Yehuda and Galil, you know. So Yehuda and Galil is that, you know, like two different... Yeah, but uh, that's just that's just within one political entity, but Yehuda and Yisro... Was right, two, so it wasn't always one two political entity. unfriendly entities. Right, it was sometimes run by different, you know, by different factions. So that's a great question. The, so the bigger principle here is that whenever there is, you know, transportation and communication challenges... You want to upfront authenticate the document. You don't want to rely on the fact that, you know, if or when there's a challenge, that then you'll reach out, you know, and try to investigate. Because the means to investigate is, is severely compromised by not only distance, but especially by, you know, um, a breakdown, you know, of political, um, you know, unity and distance and communication difficulties, et cetera. So the idea of Rebbe was, if you're sending a get from Eretz Yis from Medina Sayam to Eretz Yisrael, lefisha ein edim mitsuyim lakaimo. We're concerned that unless you're proactively validate, you know, this uh, this document and inoculate it from any kind of challenge, that when there is a challenge, that we're going to be caught, you know, um, in in a, in a circumstance where we're unable you know, to um, affirm, you know, the validity of the document, and then you're going to be stuck. The woman is going to be stuck, and that would be what a happened to Rach Lakish and the idea that the document should speak for itself? Oh, great question. So we're going to get to that in just one minute. That's a great question. That's going to be next line of the Gemara. Before we do, I should just mention something very quickly, and that is uh, Bali Tosis asked a question according to Rabba. Um, I'm not going to delve into this, but it should be aware of it. If you look at Tosis on base, on the days, Tosis Lefisha Ein Biki and Lishma, for those of you who have an open Gemara. If not, we'll explain. Tosis says, Im Tomer, Maishno Lishma, De Ein Biki and Mishar Hilkos Gitten, Kagon, Bechubar, Vishina Shmo Shma, Nikta Yom, Nikta Bayom, and Nikta Balayla, etc. Basically, Tosis says, listen, there are many requirements of a get. Um, and there are many things, you know, that if they're neglected, will invalidate, you know, the divorce, which is exactly what we're worried about. So why did Raba zero in specifically on the requirement of Lishma, that it has to be a personalized document, that it can't be generic? Why didn't he worry about five other different kind of problems? So this is a question that Balitosis asked. Are they the rices, and, the other ones? What? Are they a de derived yes, from the Torah, yes, like, yes, yes. like the Kosovo? Yeah. yeah. For example, Mechubar, right? Meaning you can't have, you can't write on the, the, the get or cannot either be written according to Rabbi Eliezer and signed according to Rabbi Meir on something that is attached, you know, to the ground. That's called Mechubar. Or Nechtam Bayom and Nechtam Balay. Let's say you have what we call a get Muktam, where the time that's written in the, um, in the Shtar is uh, not consistent with when the star was actually handed we over. We don't have a word in the Torah that tells us that. I'm sorry? We well, before have, we learned that. We have a word in the Torah, law, that tells us the Shema. Right. You have a word in the Torah that tells us the other things? Yeah, so Mechubar is derived from, you know, the, it says, the Kosav law say for Krisus, you know, the Nasan Biada. So the Gemara says, Mi she'ena Mechusar, you know, Ela okay. Nesima. Right. Well, they all have they all have something in the Torah that 
a word in the Torah that tells yeah. us. Well, the the pasuk by you know nechta by yom and the nechta balayla, that's what that's not written in the Torah, but that's a, a still a derisa problem because it's a shtar mukta, meaning it it could cheat the um, you know the uh, purchasers of you know the property like nechasim Um So that you know each one of these is a biblical issue. So Tosis discusses maybe this is more frequently neglected, um, you know, things of that sort. But um, what I wanted to make a suggestion was that maybe there's a different aspect, you know, a different, you know, singular feature to Lishma. And that is that um, it really goes to the heart and core of what the get is really all about. So in the last couple of weeks, last week we weren't here, but um, in the last couple of weeks, we've been discussing the fact, or we mentioned the fact, that Gitin, unlike Kedushin, um, is very what I call front loaded. Meaning, Minat Torah, it's, it's a unilateral process. It can be imposed. And as such, the decision to get divorced already has a certain weight. Now, that's what I mean by being front loaded, meaning it has a certain um, inevitability about it if you so choose to, you know to proceed. You don't need permission. And I think one could argue um, that Lishma is an expression of that, meaning the Lishma is right at the beginning of the process. So, and that, you know, is what I was referring to when I said there might be a difference between the Lishma of Gitin and the Lishma of Kiddushin, even though the Lishma of Kiddushin, Star Kiddushin, is derived from it. So it's, um, the reason for that is that Kiddushin is a consensual, um, you know, covenant. You know, the process is um, a mutual one. So anything having to do, you know, with um, Kiddushin in advance of the actual moment, you know, where, you know, the proposal is actually made, and then the woman responds either yes or no, Anything before that is just preparation. It's just a hatch or bialbo. However, when it comes to gitin, even though the get is not concluded, it's not binding. It doesn't have effect until it's handed over, right? But the the its unilateral um, effectiveness no decision may determine that the das legare already the decision is already a stage, you know, in the actual gerushin. And and that is true. Um, that's why Star Shifra would be the same thing as Gitten. Yeah, that's true. That's a great point. But that's true progressively, meaning when the Baal decides to get divorced, that's already significant. Nothing has yet happened, but conceptually, that's important. When he um, tells the Sofer or the Adim, you know, to prepare the Gad and to sign it, Lishma. And maybe that's one of the reasons that it has to be Lishma, because even at this point, if it was just a Heksha document, maybe it wouldn't need that. But preparing the document is stage two, if you will, you know, in the in the you know advanced or progressive, you know, march, you know, towards implementing his decision. In my opinion, and we'll discuss this later in the year, but appointing, if he does appoint the Shliach Lahalacha, an agent. You know, to uh, to deliver the get, you know that too, is a is a is not just a preparatory step; it is a progression, a further progression, of his intent, you know, to see this through, or his the concretizing of his will, you know, to terminate this marriage. Sadly. The prime difference is that so, is that because you could have an aid for a condition also is that he doesn't need a consent on the other side, so therefore his action looks like finality. Not just look like, but they, you know, it's like the get isn't done yet. And there are Gemaras, by the way, that seem to, um, you know, to articulate that these early stages are are not just preparatory. Like the Gemara says in Masachet Kedushin, Afnun Tesa Manala, that appointing a shliach laholacha is almost the equivalent of handing over the get to the woman. And then the Gemara retracts, but, you know, they say it. What do they even mean by that? But the answer is, you know, he um, is is implementing his, you know, desire to do this. So even even the first thing when he says, 
if he says he wants to divorce his wife, that's already considered a, 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 a so to speak, turning point? Right. I mean, turning point for what? That would be the question. But No, because, because we know that the reason for the Ksuba is that... Yeah. You know, and then we got to get, let's call him a, a redheaded... Uh, the the push a guy, you know, he gets upset, you know, and he might, he might, you know, he might say that, but he's going to think about it when he figures out the economics. Right. So we're not talking about fleeting or, or that's why I think it's more, it's not so much the decision. It's, you know, when you actually start taking concrete steps, that's the beginning of the process. So the first concrete step that you can probably take is the Tzivui L'Sofer Ula Edim, you know, Lichto V'Lachtom Lishma. And the fact that it is personal, personalized may very well be because of this. I, my, this is my theory. When the Gemara in Kiddushan has the view, we don't pass it this way, but the Gemara thought maybe Vyatsa Vahoy is irrelevant. Maybe you don't need Lishma in Shtar Kiddushan. Maybe it's a, unique to Shtar Gerushan. Why? For this reason. Because in Gerushan, the, the writing of the document specifically, you know, Lishma, is is an expression is a significant expression of das lagarish and das lagarish is you know a, a significant stage even though it's not enough to actually implement but it's still a stage in the gerushin whereas if you assign somebody to write a star kedushin it's not unilaterally up to you you know that you know that she's going to accept it she could say no and therefore, it's just more preparatory. So one would have thought, you know, at that early stage, do you really need lishma? But yet, if you if one finds a, a signed get on the floor, yeah, okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's not necessarily re returned to the woman, no. assuming that 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 she was already uh, get, had the get. Okay, the assumption is maybe never. You know, he had it open, signed it. it, and he had second thoughts. Right. So we see that from that that it, that's not necessarily no, no, no. There could all, again, it's not implemented. But what we're trying to figure out is like why is there a requirement of it? I'll, I'll I'll just make it clearer in a way. You know, the general requirement of Lishma is associated mostly. Try to be accurate. Well, well, well it should be Lishma. I understand the question because then people could swap gets and you could just swap names and do random. No, gets, we're, just, right? we're just trying to figure out why. It has to be personalized, meaning why can't there be, why can't you go into a farm store or <laughs> whatever, or a lawyer store and have, you know, a, a Bob and a, you know, and a Bob and a, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> whatever, a Bob and a Bobette, you know, um, you know, let's say those, those are, let's say 50% of Americans are now calling themselves Bob and Bobette. So you want to get ahead of the uh, game or mass produce. So that, you, you, you know, you could still do things to personalize it later, I guess. But the writing of the get or the signing of the uh, get, you know, maybe can, you know, at some point. It's like, well, if well, I well, well, by, by the way, maybe that's what, exactly what we don't want. We do, we do, we want we people. Right. So that, that's why we're making but, the Shema. Right. But what I'm saying is part of the reason we don't, part of the reason we're making it the Shema, part of the reason we're personalizing it is because even at the earliest stages, we don't look at the get only as a, you know, that you're, you're kind of uh, preparing the document just in case. We consider the preparation of the document already to be, you know, a stage, not, not an impl implementation, but more than just a thought, because in mean, Torah, you could just do this. Maybe that's why I right. wouldn't say that a husband who decided to divorce his wife is not supposed to live with his wife. Yeah, 100%. It's also for the reasons that we discussed earlier in the year, which is that, you know, that would be a corruption of the Kedusha Saishas. But right. in addition to that, it is because there's an aspect already, This the, the, the Gemara calls it, if you remember the sources earlier in the year, Grusha Salev. Like, you know, she's in, in his heart, you know, they're divorced. So when do we, you know, there's no Kedusha, you know, Kedusha Salev. Why is there Grusha Salev? It's all what we call you know, dvarim shabalei ve'nam dvarim. But here, because it's a unilateral process, Minan Torah, it's my, anyways, so that's my theory why lishma is different than some of these other requirements. It's not just a requirement, it's a requirement that really, 
um, underscores what is singular about a get. And that's very interesting. That's very important. The Gemara on, um, okay, so let's so leave that aside for the moment. That's for Rabbah. For Rabbah, let's go skip to the Gemara and Gimel Amdalet and the question that you asked. That's really what I want to talk about. So let's skip to the Gemara and Gimel Amud Aleph. Um, let's see, in the Mar Makomas, do I have Gimel Amud Aleph? Just one second. We have it. Um, just one second. One minute. Yeah. No. Yes. On page, um, I think about four, Talmud Babli Masachat Gitten Gimel Amud Aleph. Page three or four. Everybody have that? Or anybody? Four. Read? Four. Page okay. four. Thank you. So the Gemara says as follows. Ula Rava, according to Rava, who we just explained, Rava's view is that the problem that we're worried about, the reason you need to say Bifanei Naktam, Bifanei Naktam, is in order to substantiate the authenticity of the star because we're worried that maybe it's a forgery. So the Gemara says, according to Rava, who says that the reasoning is that when you travel between countries, you know, we're worried about the breakdown in communication and transportation. And if you don't upfront, you know, authenticate this get, we're worried that you'll never be able to do it, or at least not in timely fashion. So Libai, Trey. So if the problem is that maybe the star, maybe the get is a forgery, maybe it's not a valid document, why is it enough to authenticate it with one person? We're saying the shliach can say, Bifanai nechtav, Bifanai nechtam. I attest the fact that I was there. I was present when this get was written and signed, but he's only one person. If we're really worried that the document is fraudulent, then shouldn't we need the testimony of two people? That would only be if somebody actually got up and said that it's fraudulent. This is only a... Oh, a, oh, oh okay. So we'll, let's see if you're right or not. So the guard says, Midi dahava kim shtaros the alma. It's a known thing that when a person produces a uh, contract, right, that there is a... Um, a requirement to verify or validate the authenticity. You know, by, let's say you have on record, you have a copy of the person's uh, signature, right? Or you have witnesses who come forward who can testify. Either they actually saw the person signing or they, you know, recognize this person's uh, John Hancock. Even with no, nobody contesting? What? Even with nobody contesting the... Uh... So that's what we're going to get to in a second. You're just, you're a little bit ahead of yourself. We'll see. So the Gemara says, and that's the case, so you should have, if you need Kim Shtaros, you should require two people. Says the Gemara, No, you don't need two. You only require one. It's the principle of what we call Eid Echad. One Eid is Nemon Beisurim. You know, for example, uh, let's say you have um, food. And there's some question whether it's kosher food or not kosher food. You don't need two witnesses for that. It's enough to have what we call a nechad now and bisur. One witness can establish kashras. That's called a nechad, a single witness. Neaman is believed, he's credible. Be right. So it's you need other people's homes. So the Gemara says, okay, but Amar Dominion a nechad now and bisurim to go and chaticha. Safek shal chelav, safek shal shum. And that's it for talking about kashros. I mean, you have an object. You don't know one way or another whether it's kosher or non-kosher. I mean, it has no history. So you're, you know, you're, you're tabula rasa. It's, it's, you know, it's a blank slate. The lowest chazak isura. You don't have to override some, you know, earlier presumption. So then we say, lechonem bisur. Avol hacha is chazak isura, the eishas ish. But here, we're talking about a woman who was married. She's a married woman. And we're trying to figure out whether this get frees her, whether it terminates her marriage and her status of Ashish or not. It also has 
and whether or not you can override the chazaka, the cheskas iser of eshasish. So that's davar shebe erba, and davar shebe erba pachus mishnayim. That's the Gemara's question. So how can one shliach be neman to say b'panei nachtam, b'panei nachtam, when in fact uh, we should be demanding two witnesses like a regular, rigorous, you know, din Torah? And we're not concerned about the financial aspect, which would also require two witnesses. Well, so then even more. No, I'm saying more yeah, of a reason. I there's guess. a kasuba, there's financials. Yeah, but you know that's they. It's a good additional question. Well, let's leave it at that for the moment. So here's where the Gemara ends up saying the sensational thing that it says. So the Gemara says, uh, Actually, the need to verify a contract itself is not a biblical requirement. This is what you were alluding to, right? Why? That's the principle of Reish Lakish. The Amar Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish said, Edim achasumim al ashtar, Edim who sign uh, witnesses who sign a contract, Nasu It's as if they were interrogated in court and found to be valid witnesses. Um, and therefore, there's no need to, you know, to verify. Minat Torah. V'rabbanan hu da'atzruch, the requirement of kim shtaros, of verification, when, you, when a document appears, the need to verify it when there are witnesses attached to it or appended to it is only a rabbinical requirement. Rabbanan hu da'atzruch, v'hocha mishum aguna akiluba rabbanan. Since here, we're talking about, um, you know, a sticky situation where the woman you know, her get is being held up, her freedom is being held up. We don't want to do that. So even though there's a rabbinic requirement to verify the contract, since it's only a rabbinic requirement, we're more mekil the makom aguna. Okay? We're going to get back to this in a second. This is our topic. So this is where the Gemara establishes the principle of what we call kiyum shtaros drabanan. The need to verify a contract is only a rabbinical um, requirement. Minat Torah, a document is self-protective. The document is presumed to be um, authentic. So then the Gemara goes on to read another minute. Haikulahu chumrahu. So what are you saying? That you know, even though it's only a dindra banan, since it's a dindra banan and mishumaguna, you can get away with one person to verify, not two. To so work against it. Well, maybe from a policy point of view, that's counterproductive. Because on the one hand, you're trying to make it easier for the woman to move ahead with her life. That's a good cause, obviously. But at the same time, you may be setting her back because by lowering the standards, you may be, you know, inadvertently um, welcoming a challenge. In other words, if you had demanded, you know, at the outset that the only way this get is going to be, you know, um, utilized is if the standards are very high, then you discourage any kind of challenge because anybody who challenges knows that you know the, the means for full authentication are there. But by lessening the requirement of verification, don't you kind of open the door for legal challenges? Now, of course, this is a very fascinating question in law and in halakha, meaning, you know, when, when it comes to you know, um, standards, standards are always, you know, um, um, tricky. On the one hand, you know, if you're very rigorous about standards, then you're imposing a lot of limitations and it takes away a lot of flexibility. You know, people can't proceed if you have very high legal standards. You know, they have to have, you know, everything checked and rechecked and it's not conducive to you know, um, rapid, you know, changes or transactions. And sometimes it can gum up the works, whether it's personally in terms of a, a woman who, you know, wants to, you know, move forward with her life or economically. On the other hand, um, by loosening the standards, you know, you open the door for legal challenges. Like if everything required an ironclad um, rigorous, you know, test, 
then, you know, there'd be no room for a child. Well, how could you challenge it? The Rabbana established that one is like two when it comes to this, basically. Well, that's the question. Did they? We're, we're challenging why they did that. But by, <laughs> by, by, by basically saying that in order to do... We're, we're the saying, Torah, why did the, the Rabbana decide... Why did they saying, decide that one is two here if it's going to if it's going to backfire? It's not going to backfire because if one is treated as two, how do you challenge it? Once you have it, it's... No, 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 no. Because if you do, you do. Meaning, well, that's the question. So the Gemara says, well, let's look at the Gemara says, the matras tre, if you needed to, lo asibala ma'arer upasole. The Gemara says, if you require two, then then the Baal is finished. He can't challenge. Right? Chad, if you say, oh, you can proceed with one, asibal uma'arer upasole. Then if he does level, that's fine in terms of, you know, being proactive. You say, oh, you can't get a get, you can't use the get unless you also um, verify its authenticity. But the verification could be with one person. Yeah. Then if there's a challenge, then maybe the one person isn't enough. Why? How does the challenge defeat the one person? Because on a well, certain level... One person is super many. He's like two. No, no. When you say one they're is born two, and made, they're born to make their own rules. They made right, the rules. We're, we're wondering that whether the one is enough. That, we're trying to figure out whether the Rabbanon made the rule of one or two. One is two. Doesn't say that in the Gemara, or did they just say you can get away with one? Rambam makes the point that one that would be one against one if there's just one Eidud. His word against the AIDS word. No, no, we're not right. Oh, oh. The, well, you mean talking about the yes. The, um, but, um, but Rabbi, once you made the point, uh, and a very important point, that it, that the that the Rabbanim wanted to delay the process and make it a little more difficult to create a thoughtful process on the um, on the part of the uh, of the husband, for the sake that when he really goes proceeds with it, he his intentions are absolute and well thought out. That it's not on the spur of the moment. No, that or... there are other things that slow him down in that process. The need for a get, the need for lishma. But we're talking about a case where he, you know, he's already well, passed. Would that. He slowed down if he has to go find two adim to, to witness his signature. Or witness his. Well, again, he's already delivered the get. So minat Torah, the get is is okay. The question is whether or not you know the the, you know the the abundance of caution. You know, to make sure, you know, that there's no challenge, which would then undermine the second marriage and, and the children that were produced by the second marriage. You know, all, all I'm trying to show really is that there is a natural tension. Whenever there's an urgency, you know, to allow people, you know, flexibility and to move forward, you know, there is an equal possible but, 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 uh, uh, counter pressure. In that, you know, the, the higher the standards you have, the more you discourage, you know, challenges, or at least the more you build in the wherewithal. Well, I think this is different, for example, when, when, when one person comes to testify that a husband has, has died, for example. So yeah. the Gemara goes to all kinds of pains to explain that if the woman accepts that, she accepts the, the potential repercussions. If, if, well, that's, if, it's very similar to this problem. But, but in, this case, in this case... Daika uminsava. But, but, but in that case, the Rabbonin made that technicality of one person is okay. With that provision, the Gemara goes to all kinds of pains to say Wait, but this, but it, it, I'm it, saying to you the is, woman is not going to take it slightly. She's going to be sure the husband's dead. Because yeah, there, that's Isha Daiko Mintzava. Right. She doesn't want to end up being in, in a terrible position. Right. In this case, but even then, by the way, in, in Isha Bamisa Saba, we're not talking about a case typically where there's a challenge. We're talking about, you know, proactively you know, can she move forward with the assumption that there's no problem? But there too, you have a similar issue, just that here there's more, you know, because there's a Baal and he's maybe antagonistic, so the possibility of recriminations or of him claiming, I, you know, this whole thing is a forgery, we haven't heard from him. He's sent to Shliach, you know. But that was tied into the Takon of the Rabbonin, so to well, speak. Well, yeah, but what I'm trying to explain to you is that you're already looking at it knowing the Maskana or knowing... You know the conclusion. This is where the Gemara is is actually debating what the nature of that takana is. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is, when you said one is good enough, did you mean one is one, 
in which case you're, you know, on the one hand, being flexible, which is a good thing. On the other hand, you might be inviting, you know, legal challenges, which is a bad thing. Or are you saying that the one really is good enough? And therefore, you know, it's almost like there are two. And therefore, if there actually is a challenge, you know, then, you know, um, this is going to override the challenge because the one is like two, right? Now, the you're, you're, don't get me wrong. You're right. I'm just trying to explain to you that you're right because that's the conclusion of this Gemara. But it didn't have to be that way. The Chachamim could have just said, listen, right now there's no challenge. We don't, you know, we still require some level of, let's say, minor verification, you know, to have confidence that this is fine. But that doesn't mean that, you know, if if there is a challenge, we might want to look at this again. That could have been the posture of the Chachamim, right? You're saying, no, you know, it isn't that way. That's not what they were talking. Here's the Gemara, where they're, which is wondering why and what they were talking, right? But in the Gemara, where it talks about the woman who doesn't know if the husband died and one person comes, it, it right there on the spot attacks the issue frontal and says, listen, this Takana is only made and he only let the woman get away with this because they, she's on warning. That, you know, right, right. I'm saying that's out. what the Gemara, but that's called Elechad or Isha Neman Ben Misa Sabal. The language of the Gemara is Isha Daika, we'll see in a moment, very similar language here. Isha Daika Uminsava, meaning she doesn't want, we trust her because, you know, um, she she's, the, make herself she's, vulnerable, the, put herself in a she's the most vulnerable and vic, you know, she's the, be the biggest victim if she plays fast and loose with the facts because she's the, it's going to blow up in her face. Right. Khalila. So therefore, it's in her best interest. You but know, here, and, it's the Baal who wants actually to have this get confirmed. No. Right, but we're trying to do good. We're trying to do, you know, uh, uh, right by the woman. We're saying, you know, on the one hand, we're trying to do make her, you know, lot easier. But are we making it easier if it ends up inviting more challenges? I mean, if you take a bigger picture you know, being more rigorous at the outset may save her, you know, um, Agma Snappa. Trouble on the back end. Trouble on the back end, exactly. So it's, what I'm trying to show you is that these considerations, which are very reasonable on both sides, you know, um, like when, you, when you're trying to figure out policy, you know, there's short-term policy, there's long-term policy. You know, when, when people speak about, you know, the, the, the benefits and the drawbacks of having higher standards, you know, this is exactly the tension. The tension is if you have too high standards, you know, you're not going to get anything done. If you have too, you know, a low threshold of standards, right, then you're inviting risk. Look, we're in the middle of a bank crisis, right? Sounds like we've been Yes, there. yes. Okay. <laughs> so what, what is a bank crisis? And what, or are you standards? Well, uh, you ignore standards. Exactly. I mean, what, what is regulation and what are, I'm not talking about, I'm not weighing in. It's not my field. I have no clue, you know, whether the standards are, are, are too, are, are, you know, whether they're good, they're not. But, but the principles I understand, meaning there are, you know, there are these uh, oversight, you know, whether it's the Fed or whatever it is, or, or Congress or, you know, there, there is an oversight group and they're trying to assess you know, the tension between two things. On the one hand, you want, you know, the banks to have flexibility because the more flexible they are, the more liquid, you know, um, capital there is in the economy. And that, you know, makes the common economy more uh, hum along and, you know, it expands uh, the economy and includes, uh, you know, um, all sorts of people and increases opportunity, et cetera. If you have two draconian, requirements, if the bank has to account for every dollar, you know, in cases of run of the bank, then, then it can't lend, am I right? In a more flexible way. Yes. It, it has economically bad, you know, consequence. However, however, if you drop all your regulations. Only the balance. The question is. And then you get a run on the bank and then you lose confidence in the system, you know, then, um, then that's a catastrophe. So how do you balance, you know, um, regulation, which is necessary? with regulation that isn't, you know, overbearing. That's exactly what we're talking about in this Gemara. 
We're saying we want the woman to move forward with her life. And therefore, you know, um, in a case where somebody sends a get, you know, cross country, and we're worried, you know, um, because the parties are not in front of us. So we're wondering, is it all a fake or is it real? Right? So the compromise was, you need the aid, the shliach to say, the shliach has to be able to say, I know I was there. I saw that this was authentically written and authentically signed. So then the Gemara says, that shouldn't be enough. We're talking about an Eishas Ish. We're talking about Matir and Eishas Ish. That's a Davr Shabbat Erba. That should require two witnesses. So the guts of the Gemara is saying, number one, the Din of Reish establishes that we presume the Kashrus of a contract. We have to get back. That's our main topic. And we're going to get back to that in a second. What does that mean we presume the Kashrus of a contract? But this is the way the Gemara is going. You but, presume but, the, we I presume the Kashrus of the contract. But Number two, different. however, one second, Midra Banan, we require some verification because otherwise we're not going to be able to sleep at night. We're still a little worried. But that doesn't mean we have to be draconian. We can be flexible to solve, to solve our concerns. And then the Gemara says, you want to be flexible to solve the concerns in order to, you know, um, afford the woman, you know, the opportunity to move forward. That's great, except you want to make sure it doesn't blow up in your face. Namely, by saying that one person can do this, you're, you know, you're inviting the potential um, challenge of someone who says only one person said that, and, and it's not true. You know, we demand grow more proof. Where but if you inquired two people, that would be the end of the story because there's no, nothing better than two witnesses. But actually, the difference here between this and the ball is that if we have a lachic truth, and sometimes it, it 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 doesn't actually match what we physically see. But right. still, the halacha stands out. The halachic mm -hmm. truth could be that one signature doesn't matter. You can come five guys and tell me I saw that it wasn't signed the Shema. It doesn't matter. The one verification meant that's the halachic truth. In the case of the woman, if the bottle comes back, you know, the, the bahar, it's called baharogvaraglov. You know, it's hard to have halachic truth in the face of the bottle coming back. You know that. Right. So I, I think but remember that this, to begin with, was a kula, meaning it is a dindrabanan that we believe. It's a drabanan on a drabanan, basically. But the point is that it can turn fast into something worse. So, you know, how much regulation do you want? You don't want to be overbearing, but you don't want to under, you know, regulate either because the consequences could be worse. It's exactly the same phenomenon, basically. It's a very common thing. And this is how the halacha handles it. So the Gemara says, let me get to the final line. So the Gemara says something similar to what you've been saying about Isha Daiko Mitzvah. The Gemara says the following. Um, the, the, the Shliach, in the end, gives it in the presence of two witnesses. Right? Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Hanina, Charam or Bifnei Shayim, Charam or Bifnei Gimel. Some say in front of two, some say in front of three. Mi Kara Medak Dayek, Velo Asi, La Rue Nafche. It's not like this get is being given in the middle of the night somewhere. It has to be given in the presence of witnesses or a Bezdin. So the, 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 that adds extra pressure for the Shliach to tell the truth. So even though he's one guy, he's Medak Dayak. That's very similar to the Gemara that you were talking about, which is that the woman who says, I know for certain that my husband died. I saw him uh, fall into the Mayim Shein Lem Sof. I saw him fall into the ocean and, you know, he never came out. Um, we believe her because Isha Daika Uminsava. She's not going to play games here because, you know, it'll be much worse for her. You know, if, if as you say, Baharag Baraglav, if he shows up one day, then then, you know, her, you know, subsequent life is going to be in shambles. So it's, you know, that builds extra credibility for her. And this, mainly the reputation, they, they're not giving this get, you know, without an audience. They're putting their own credibility, their own reputation on the line. And since they're putting their own reputation on the line, therefore we... Um, and, and even though he's the Baal Shliach, which means that he's probably getting paid by the Baal? Well, again, the concern is is you know, that the Baal is the one who's going to, you know, is going to no. attack you. So that's not the problem here. The, the, concern, the Shliach is saying it's a good get. 
The Baal was we're one we're right, worried so about he's Baal will turn against around. interest, as we say in American law. He's basically his, his it's even stronger. He's we have we have it also in the Gemara. He, he's commenting yeah. against his own interest, the Shriach, because the Baal is the one that hired him. So by saying it's it's okay. so he should have extra credibility because right. he's he's saying something that you know he, the guy he, who's he, paying he's him. He's a B at least at the at the end of that, it would be his boss who's who's challenging him. Correct. Okay. So anyways, but let's get back. So this is a very interesting Gemara, and it's a great example, as say, of checks and balances, I guess you could call it. You know, um, the proper degree of caution and, you know, boldness, um, you know, the, the proper level of regulation. It's all the same thing, basically. Okay. But what comes out of this Gemara that's more important than anything else is that this Gemara quotes Reish Lakish. We've mentioned Reish Lakish all year long, but this is where Reish Lakish is. There are actually two Gemaras. Reish Lakish says, Eidam achasum malashtar. Reish Lakish says that you don't, on a Torah level, not talking about Midra Banan, you don't have to worry about a star, about a contract. You don't have to be concerned that a contract is um, fraudulent. Because Eidam achasum malashtar, if it's signed, are unchallengeable. It's as if it was you know, verified in court. So, of course, the statement alone, that's what I want to examine now, the statement alone is shocking. What does it mean to say that if a contract surfaces and the, you know, the, the there are signatures on the piece of paper, there are no living witnesses there, right? There's our signatures representing people. What does it mean to say that that is the equivalent of two people coming to court, testifying, being interrogated, and being found um, authentic, there are no people. I can understand why he's why they would need to have such an instrument, so society could run. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Where Rish got it from? That's right, it. right. And what's fast? By the way, the 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 even the way you formulate it is totally. Where did he get it from? It's fascinating. This tremendous expansion of Rish Lakish to say that we treat signatures on on a, on a contract as if we. You know, our our you understand uh, why society would need an instrument. No, we need it, but we're talking about Din Daraisa. Where do you get it from? You know, where is it? He doesn't have he doesn't have a source. There's no makar. But it's more than that. So then the question is, how far do we push this? Like, what does it really mean? Under what conditions does Reish Lakish apply? Even if it was very minimum, it would be spectacular, because just the statement alone to say that that a, you know a signed contract is the equivalent of live witnesses who are interrogated is already shocking. But let's go further. So there are two, in the entire Talmud Bavli, Reish Lakish's statement appears twice. One is right here, and the other one is in Masechet Ksuvo, Staf Yud Chesomadez. There, it pertains to the question, which I'm going to read in a moment, that's the next Mar Makom, to the question of recanting testimony. It's called, it's a rule, it's called Kivin Shehigid Shuvein Echoser Magid. So let, let's talk about the general rule. If two witnesses come to court, right, and they testify, and they're interrogated, you know, and it's established, we, we believe them. And then the next morning, they come back to court and they say, you know what? The whole thing was fraud. Or we forgot to tell you that we were... Um, Can't you take a joke? It was a joke, or or mevudana, you knew that that's that's mevudim. It means it's a joke, or 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 ketanim, you knew at the time we actually were not kosherated. So the rule is we don't believe them. We have a rule. It's called kivin shehigid shuvin echoser magid. Once they testified, right, they can't come back and testify again. You can only testify once in court, legally. Or then that's maybe the point. You have only one opportunity. Or once the court accepts your testimony, it's no longer about you. You know, it, it, it has a life of its own. They received the set testimony and there was every reason to believe it. So now it's, you know, court evidence. And individuals can't recant court evidence. Or we just don't believe them. Could be various different explanations and there are important differences. But at the end of the day, the bigger principle is that Adim, right, witnesses, once they are interrogated, are believed to the extent that they themselves cannot recant. So now the question is, what about an edus bishtar? Let's say you have a contract, it appears in court. 
to the witnesses who were the signatories of that uh, document, can they come into the court and say, you know, um, we, you know, it's all a fraud. Can they say that or not? So the Gemara says the following. Mishnah says as follows. Ha'edim she'amru k'savya deinu huzeh. Right, the witnesses say, this is our uh, John Hancock. We wrote this, you know, these signatures. They're authentic. But we were, at the time, you know, coerced, or, you know, we were minors, we were possibly edus, we were relatives. So the Mishnah says we believe them. If the only way to authenticate the document is through them, and they claim that there was something untoward, that's called a Pesha Asar Pesha Hitir. The only reason we believe them, the only reason we believe in this document is because they have authenticated it. And they were, you know, on the one hand, authenticate with one hand, they're authenticating it, and with the other hand, they're telling you that it's that it's meaningless because they were not qualified as they did. However, if we have other means to authenticate, right, then um, we don't believe them. So this, the Gemara, you know, follows up on this. This is true only if uh, they claim that they were coerced, like, you know, financial coercion, like, you know, they were greedy. Um, or somebody put, you know, threatened them financially. If their lives were in stake, why do we believe them? Either way, we shouldn't believe them. After all, they already testified. They already testified. They can't testify a second time on the same issue. Can't recant your testimony. Says the Gemara, V'chitei mahani mili al lest you say, when can you not recant your testimony? If you're uh, actually a, 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 you know, a real aid and you come to court, then you can't recant your testimony. But if you're a signature, signator on a document, or there's a document that surfaces with your signature, and you even, even if you agree with it, that, is that the kind of testimony that you can't recant? Says the Gemara, that's not true. Even then, we apply this principle. Why? So this is the, there are two places in Chas. Our Gemara, which says, we're not worried that a document has been forged because of Reish Lakish, because we treat the signatures as if they are interrogated witnesses. That's one case. And the second case is this case in Ksuvos, where the Gemara says, even Adam and Ashtar cannot recant their testimony. It's as if they were interrogated and found worthy, and therefore they can't turn their back on the Adus at that point in time. Okay? That, those are the two cases. So what's fascinating, if you look at the next piece, is the Ritva. This is what we want to examine. You know, we're going to start here today, but let me just also before, because before, we're going to have to go off soon, but let me just remind everybody that next, um, Jacob, uh, next week <coughs> at eight o'clock. Not eight seven, o'clock, and, and you, you, the Zoom will send out when we have it. Zoom will be sent out. The topic will be on uh, Pesach, actually, Shkitas uh, Korban Pesach, but it'll be, you know, the idea will be accessible. Um, and this is the yard side share that I give um, annually for my father's yard side. Um, it'll be given in live in Yeshiva University. Anybody wants to come, you know, is welcome. But we'll send out the flyer, and it'll be on Zoom, and it is co-sponsored also by the Fifth Avenue. Um, and, 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 and it's eight, 8 o'clock, not 7.30. 8 o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, and you'll send out the um, the link. Yes. Okay, so getting back to the point here, the Ritva has a very interesting comment. So the Ritva says, Ikasha, my raya, my si, my hu, now he, Duresh Lakish. In our Gemara, we say that, you know, if a contract surfaces and we know nothing about it, the presumption is that it's not fraudulent because of Reish Lakish. 
So for some reason, the Ritva assumed that the original statement of Reish Lakish was in Ksuvas, to say that you can't recant testimony. You know, if you admit that you signed it, you can't say, oh, I signed it, but it's not real. So, so the Ritva says, my Raya, my see my Udu Reish Lakish. We're talking about a case where they admit that they signed, right? They're not saying it's a forgery. They're just saying it was there a fake. Circumstances. We're, 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 or the circumstances, we, you know, we're a chozer. But if you were talking about uh, a situation where there was a Question whether the whole thing was fraudulent or forgery. The or we don't even know if these are the people who signed. it's a forgery. That's a fascinating thing. <laughs> there are two cases of Reishlakish and all of Shas, explicit cases of Reishlakish and all of Shas. Reishlakish is the foundation for treating contract witnesses as real, real testimony. But what we're saying is it's two places in Shas. And what the Ritva is saying is one is even much more radical than the other. It's one thing to say that when you have an authentication of the actual signatures that they can't recant. Just like uh, oral testimony cannot be recanted once it's given properly. Even that is a Chiddush because there wasn't really an interrogation. We're just saying it's the equivalent of an interrogation. But to say that when you have a piece of paper that shows up in court and we don't even know if they actually signed it, that the presumption is that they signed it based on Reish Lakish? No, that's, that's a little circular because Reish Lakish is saying that it is uh, evidence. From, from, quite circular. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's an enormous say, The star is as strong as a... As, the star is saying about itself that it's authentic. Yeah. So that's what the Ritva calls out. It's fascinating. What if, uh, what, what if the person writes two stars? And gives one to the Beit Din without any Eidim. In other words, the husband writes two uh, Sefer Kritot and gives one to I to the Beit Din or to or to the Sanhedrin without Eidim on it. It's meaningless. Would and any would that be acceptable as if there were Eidim? No, because it's not. It's not prepared. I mean, there's something unless it's Big Saviado, which See, is what we discussed. Saviado, okay. No, no, no. That, Savio Do we discussed very extensively in our previous topic. You know, that that's biblically that's a proper get. And rabbinically, that's problematic. We say um that's Gimel Gitin Psulin. One of them is Kosavik Saviado Vainalavedin. We say that, you know, um, you know, Midra Bun on you should be, you should do use you should do better, but Torah, that would be a proper get if it was written in the handwriting of the um of the Baal. But otherwise, you know. You uh, you need witnesses, but the question is, how do we know they're real witnesses? How do we know somebody didn't just you know fake the whole thing? So what what the Ritva ends up saying, I'm going to have to stop in a minute. Ritva gives two answers. First answer he says is, well, maybe there was a Masora that Reish Lakish said his halacha even in a case where there was no kiyum, there was no authentication of the uh, signatures, because um, Reish Lakish up front thinks that part of the nature or character of a of a contract is that it protects itself it's self-protective inami look, look at the second answer the hanok on kamosha tirits are benu to mid on rabbi shlokish data maksum alashtar nasi kamishnachre this is a bezin alma dalima milsa dishtara the lake lamecha shlemichtam shikra dishtara so the the second answer the ritva says all we know is the dinner of Reish Lakish, and we knew two, we know two applications. It's not that we knew one and then we extended it from there to the other. But what's the common denominator? The common denominator is that a contract is considered to be superior to verbal testimony. And therefore, even a verbal testimony would require some sort of interrogation, a contract the 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 expectation that people don't forge contracts that it's so anathema for them to do that that there's such a respect let's say for for contracts you know that people would never do that or or their fear of being uh, discovered <laughs> it's a different world you know um, you know 
if if there's an even an outside that check, or, or the absolute necessity for society society to have some. Uh, right, but this uh, isn't this is a right. Rely on otherwise we would we you know everything would be chaotic. Right, but you still have to believe that it that it corresponds to a, a fair system, right? No, so what no, you're saying is that that's not the big uh, hang up. The big hang up still is where you got it from. I mean, the reason for the need for it. No, 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 we're not explaining the need. We're also explaining the mechanism. So Rashi says this. If you look at Rashi and Gitan on Gimel and Aleph, Rashi says, um, you know, Nasa Kamisha Nechra to some of Bezdin, the Lochatsif Inish Luziufe. Right? The, 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 the possibility, people just would never do that. Writing, you know, faking a contract, that's like anathema. Or, or the potential of being, the risk of being caught doing that as an individual once you know who the individual was is such and that is greater than being caught uh giving false testimony well we don't think that adim who testify are are false we have a keskas kashras on that too let's say if moshe and aaron come to court and they testify no, but they can be they, they can they can be contested with somebody else coming but the star has no no no, 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 no. i'm star. saying the other way let's say uh you know ruben and, and uh and uh, you know, uh, and Levy testify, and they're kosher. As far as we know, they're kosher Adim. And then you know, Aaron and Moshe come to court, and they say they're not honest. That doesn't help you. If two Adim who weren't Krovim came, you'd say that's Trey and Trey. Maybe, maybe th th this no. is a really modern way. We're not giving the Reg Lakish credit because. When you have, when you, what's the setting for Adas? A Bezdin, there's some dispute. And we know today that people can't remember anything. That's been proven in the last 50 years. People's memory is, is, is zero. So maybe that's higher probability of, let's say, not criminality, but just lack of authenticity or agreement. Whereas the idea that somebody is writing a contract and going to the trouble of forging two different people's signature is really it could happen, but basically, happen. But, but basically, when you present somebody with a, a, contra a contract and it's uh, it, it has it has a status, you could actually do DNA analysis and find out what year it was done. So really, the scientific approach today would favor the the, the contract. We just have this idea that somehow if two people show up, it's like Perry Mason. And we're going to find the truth, but that doesn't <laughs> like really it. happen in real life. I think life. there's a lot of validity to what you're saying. Not not so much the DNA part, because that's well, no. Uh, the, the idea that a document, the idea that somebody would go to the trouble a right. while back. I think to, it's also it's like again, it's uh, not a it's, it's, it's a not certain, so real, right? Or or there's a certain there are certain taboos in society, and and it goes a little to what both of you are saying. Meaning because there's a recognition that you know some element of trust is critical. For you know, for e the economy, for for <clears throat> status, you know. Again, today everything is crazy. But, is, is it perhaps? You know, but, but but if you think about it, if somebody showed up with a a, a legal contract, you know, and had all the, the 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 trappings and verbiage, and there were two signatures and dates, ostensibly on face value, you're going to accept it. You're not saying, well, they went. That's what those officers are saying. Well, right. I'm saying so, that's a, that's really in in a lot of ways. <laughs> radical but modern and and not in and and at the same time accurate whereas if two people show up they confuse they're confused you know you know right. the whole idea is we always see that people are are, are i mean that's why right. he says the language it's kind of like an intrinsic to the document right. is it i think it's a great point there's only one other thing that, that we need to add though and that is that what we've been saying all along which is this is rab chaim's idea and that is that we really treat the din of Reish Lakish, not only as what we call an umdana, like there's a presumption that everything right. is, you know, but as edus. And it, that's what I've been calling, but trying to understand his view, a kind of like a blank check of edus. Meaning there's a dasa mischai, meaning the, the person who is, who, you know, who, who loses by creating this uh, document, by, by doing it this way, he almost like commits, you know, that you know, whatever you read into this document that is, you know, um, reasonable, plausible, you know, I hereby commit that that should be treated, you know, as testimony. Because remember, 
Reish Lakish isn't just saying, oh, if a contract shows up, assume it's good. He's using language, saying, Kamisha Nechkara, it's Edim, and it's Kamisha Nechkara. Remember, the witnesses don't even have to see the transaction, right? They were, they were there. The husband, you know, brought them into his study and said, I want you to prepare a get. You know, it should be written a certain way and sign it. And then he, or the Shliach, is going to go find the Isha and give it to her. They don't have to be, if it's Eid they don't have to be present. The, the, the issue is Rashi's comment. By Rashi's saying, so, so I think Rashi's comment is a way of saying, as long as what's being said in the name of the Shtar and the Edim is something that objectively is plausible, that's where the Umdana comes in. That's where the Chazaka comes but in. But once you do if that... people were forging Shtaros all over the place... Right. It wouldn't be credible. Well, well once you're there. doing that, you have to sort of explain why the chutzpah, as Rashi points out, yeah. would be greater. Yeah. And the only thing I'm thinking about is that when you prepare a star, usually, yeah. again, a person can do it by himself, but usually he has to get either a sulfur, he has to get somebody who's good at forging the signature. He can do it all by himself if he's very clever and very... So you now you got X number of people involved. And the, the rule is, as Benjamin Franklin said, if you want to keep a secret, you have to kill the other guy. Because you know, if you have more than one person involved, you know it's uh, you know it, it's not going to be a secret. So maybe the 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 the, the chutzpah issue or the concern, just like a person is not has a chutzpah in front of his balchov, okay? Because he knows the other guy knows. Right. He's looking at the guy the eye. and he knows the guy knows he's lying, right. okay? So when he when he's when he's done it with three four people involved in the, in, in 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 the plot, you know, it, it's. It you know it, it it puts him at great risk that he's going to be right. exposed. I I mean a, another way of saying what Andy's saying is that there's there's a closer proximity between the contract the star and the actual principles. Whereas when when you when you throw it in front of a bezdin, you have witnesses. They're not necessarily part of that group. Is what he's talking about. They're they're offering their testimony that they saw something that they did something. But the contract, which was prepared, as Andy said, by the principals and a soul fair, et cetera, it would be hard to look at the other guy in the eye and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, the, the, the contract was written up. Here's all the doc documentation. And you have two people that signed it. They don't have to be around. We know they signed it. Well, that's they're, what we they're, mean. They're involved think... with, the, with the actual. I, I don't think that, I don't think that was Rachel Luckish's approach. But I'm saying once Rashi opens that door, well, Rashi only is telling you that... There's a psychological reason that right, we have no, to so, explore what the, why there's a psychological yeah. reason. So when we go forward, what I'm going to try to explain is that um, I think there are two perspectives in understanding Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish is the cornerstone of contracts. And there are two perspectives, you know, along with Eddie Messier and Eddie Hasim and Saviado, which we discussed. But there are two basic factors in, in this cornerstone. One is the what we call the Umdana, the presumption. How a strong presumption that people, you know, that that what's being said or what's being um, read, you know, into this document, into this contract is, you know, um, presumably, you know, true and accurate. And that's where Rashi's comment, you know, that Lochatif Inish Lizyufe becomes very important. Everybody needs that aspect of it. Sure. What I'm trying to show is that there's still a debate and that is that all there is to it? Or because of that, the ability to speak in the name of the contract has the force of actual testimony, which is stronger than any individual chazaka. What we're going to try to show is, at least according to some Bafarshim, what Reish Lakish articulates is, is serious, meaning it's edim hachasumim kimishanechkara edusim. And that's, I think, what the Ritva is saying when he says the common denominator between you can't recant your testimony once you've written, you know, signed the, the document. And, you know, it even self-protects, you know, against the charge of forgery is alima um, edusa deshtar. That, the, that in some respects, and this is a what we're all struggling to explain, even though it's initially counterintuitive, but that the, the evidence or the testimony, even as testimony of a contract, in some respects, is more flexible and more powerful than um, you know than oral testimony. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to pick up with that when we continue, but that'll be for in a while, I guess. After Pesach, we'll talk about it extensively. But next week, just to remind everybody, at eight o'clock, 
we'll be discussing, um, I'll be giving your side chair and the, the um, you know, Fifth Avenue Synagogue will be co-sponsoring um, either in person in Yeshiva University or by Zoom, the link but will But someone will, will have the address at YU? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get out by email, Henry. Everybody will have yeah. it. Good. Yeah. Thank okay, you. so have a good week, so, everyone. And, thank, uh, you, we'll thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.